everyone, and welcome to the UNIS International Conference. My name is Estela Vieira. I work here at the Law Department and at the Research and Innovation Department, and I am honored to welcome you to this round of lectures. First, I would like to thank Chandigarh University in India for our long-lasting partnership. Always so kind and available to join us in our projects. We have just finished a module on global workplace for students from five different nationalities hosted by Eunice and Chandigarh University. It's been a great experience so far. We are honored for this partnership and I also would like to thank all our partners that have shared this event on their academic environment. Today we have here our guest speaker, Dr. Minu Bardwaj, she's a global career advisor in Chandigarh University in India and also the vice president of the Women's Cell, an international human rights organization. Her PhD is in international marketing on the topic strategies for building higher education as a global brand through cross-cultural engagement among students, which is also the topic we're having here today. She has particular interests in international relations, customer relationship management, editing, public speaking, and international education. So the presentation here is going to be on this topic, the importance of social cultural diversity. So thank you so much for being here, Dr. Minu. The floor is all yours. So uh, my today's topic is on sociocultural diversity, and we believe the beauty of the world lies in the diversity of its people. What language do you speak or what is your religion? What holidays you celebrate or what is your racial identification? What is your ethnic identity and what is your culture? So we're going to talk about various topics in today's conversation. In the next slide, we'll be introducing you to, first of all, what the social cultural diversity is about. So we know that social cultural diversity concerns aspects of culture that can influence an individual's interaction with others of different backgrounds and cultural differences have led to misunderstandings and poor communication. We'll present to you uh, with an example and focus on social cultural diversity has rightly been placed on understanding and raising awareness of the differences between cultural attitudes and improving communication within teams. So uh, in the next slide, we'll be talking more about how we can understand the socio-cultural diversity. It is very important to understand who am I. So it's very important to have a self-esteem and efficacy, emotional intelligence. The second part is who are they? You need to have a cultural empathy and you have to be a responsible citizenship to become who are we conflict management skills and inclusivity of I and they so that it becomes a complete cultural diversity intelligence. So this this is the important aspect of the cultural diversity. And in the next slide, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk more about multiculturalism which is a recognition of abundant diversity of cultures, respect for the differences, acknowledging the validity of different cultural expressions and contributions. So there are a lot of factors which make a, a culture complete, valuing what other cultures offer, encouraging the contribution of diverse groups, empowering people to strengthen themselves and others to achieve their maximum potential by being critical of their own biases and celebrating rather than just tolerating the differences in order to bring about unity through diversity. So these all are the, uh, you know, base, basis of uh, multiculturalism. Uh, so in the next slide, we'll go in more detail about uh, how cultures have given this extraordinary capacity to create cohesiveness, to nurture growth and to give identity at every level, may it be the education or the workplace. Cultures provide norms that allow the diversity of mankind to coexist, but they can also restrain flexibility, narrow scope and obstruct necessary change. So knowledge of cultural influences can be leveraged to mitigate risk, contain cost and improve corporate effectiveness. So we'll go to the next slide. And uh, this is how we perceive. So when we are meeting somebody from a different culture, all we see is the behavior and practice, but we don't see what is underlying. So the uh, the main, the key factors which are underlying are the values that we, they have uh, inculcated 
you know, throughout their life, the beliefs of their culture, attitudes and the perception. And all these are generated because of other uh, coexisting parameters like climate, geography, demographics, economics, their own religion, ideologies, the education system and the media that plays a very vital role in um, uh, making a person and giving them, uh, 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 you know, uh, these kind of behavior and practices. So in in next we, uh, we uh, in the next slide, we'll talk more about the, um, you know, uh, for an example, the symbol that we use, which is taken as OK, which is a sign of OK in UK and USA. Even in India, it means perfect. So in Japan, it means money. In Russia, it's zero. But in Brazil, it's considered as an insult. So it's very important when we are interacting with other person because we don't know how they're going to perceive um, uh, the symbols and the language that we are using. So we'll go in more detail in the next slide about how people are uh, using different symbols and why it is very important to understand the cultures. Um, but I'll go with this quote first. We says that we have become not a melting pot but a beautiful mosaic different people different beliefs different yearnings different hopes and different dreams so this cultural diversity is a beautiful concept to un understand can we go to the next slide please yeah so this is why diversity is important because it builds a well-balanced world it increase and increase capacity and ideas in workplace and classroom, which is very important because even in terms, everybody is talking about uh, global rankings, global workplace, uh, global classroom. And this pandemic has actually, uh, you know, this pandemic has become a catalyst to uh, globalize the workplace and classroom as well. So I'd say that pandemic has acted as a catalyst to, you know, um, uh, in, uh, ignite the whole uh, globalization at uh, the speed and which which is uh, uh, that is why we, uh, it is very important to have this cultural diversity and the reduced discrimination worldwide vision with localized experience profound life experience so it's it's in in total it's it's a beautiful life experience as well yeah so this is how this is a beautiful example of benefits of diversity in the workplace since estella has already mentioned about her innovation and this global workplace we understand that a diverse workplace better understands diverse markets because you can take inputs from different uh, cultures and that's how you can stimulate innovation and develop more products it gives company a freedom to go after the most talented people regardless of any differences cultural diverse workplace builds trust in your brand with a diverse target market it enhances employee engagement by showing the company understand and respects different culture so it is very very important to create that kind of balance in the workplace at the global level in the next slide we'll see more detail about the cultural intelligence that how this like we say emotional intelligence if you have understood yourself and the understanding the cultural intelligence it will give you effective action in taking uh, you know um, with respect to right context or uh, taking actions it helps in motivation and self confidence uh, you know a more cultural knowledge helps in cognitive immersion and then you it leads to more uh, diverse planning and uh, interpreting of the whole thing so this is what i also see at times when we are developing programs or we are providing solution because we have taken this cultural diversity or we have worked with different cultures understanding different cultures helps you in developing a lot of programs uh, pr providing with a lot of solutions understanding the market in a very uh, appropriate way in the next slide, we'll see uh, more uh, details about the problems that are, uh, you know, uh, it's it's what are the problems basically. So the main problem is the different communication style across. For example, uh, some countries share the English language like a simple yes. This varies from maybe I'll consider it to definitely so with many shades in between. Right. So a simple yes may vary. And some uh, white Americans typically consider raised voices to be sign, 
that a fight has begun while some black jewish and italian americans or even if indians often feel that an increase in volume is a sign of an exciting conversation among friends so it's it's you know different styles um which triggers or which provides a base to understand uh, at the workplace and uh, it's it helps you understand that it's not a disrespect so you start respecting each other rather than running away from each other in the next slide uh, we'll see more uh, you know the different attitudes toward conflict some cultures view conflict as a positive thing because it gives you a platform for discussion while other view it as something to be avoided some we say that this person is a shy person or i don't know why they are um, discussing so much so this is also a cultural aspect of a cultural diversity in the us conflict is not usually desirable but people often are encouraged to deal directly with conflicts in case if that so arises in fact face to face meetings customarily are recommended as a way to work through whatever problem exists in contrast in many eastern countries open conflict is experienced as embarrassing or demeaning as a rule uh, differences are best worked out quietly but in many countries they give a platform to discuss the differences to so that the opinions are heard um, and you know and that's how it works so a written exchange might be for, favored means to address the conflict so there are different attitudes that we uh, see uh, to handle a conflict or a conversation all right can uh, can we move to the next slide please yeah so yes so um there are different approach to completing task so people also have different ways when they have to complete any task asian and hispanic cultures tend to attach more value to developing relationship at the beginning of a shared project and more emphasis on task completion toward the end european americans tend to focus immediately on the task at hand and let relationships develop as they work on the task this does not mean that people from any of these cultural backgrounds are more or less committed to accomplishing the task or value relationships more or less but it means they may pursue them differently so this is again a very beautiful example to understand that people do take their own time in understanding people so sometimes they they just uh, think that it is very important to start with the work first and developing relations later or some people believe that developing relation is more important rather than um, you know uh, start jumping on to the project because understanding a culture or a person gives them a more confidence in developing the whole project so in the next slide we'll see that how different decision making style uh, is also you know uh, is part of cultural uh, cross culture problem for example in us decisions are frequently delegated that is an official assigns responsibility for a particular matter to a sub ordinate in many southern european and latin american countries there is a strong value placed on holding decision making responsibilities oneself so when decisions are made by groups of people majority the rule is a common approach in the us in japan consensus is the preferred mode that everybody should agree so this is again a very important part in uh, decision making style so people are uncomfortable with independence on the job and prefer to be tied to the apron strings of the boss in decision making so that also you know um, is a aspect of a cultural cross cultural problem uh, so in the next slide we'll also see that how different approach to knowledge uh, is making you know it um, how people approaches vary with the knowledge so european cultures tend to consider information acquired through cognitive means such as counting and measuring more valid then other ways of coming to know things so they'll just value that from uh, you know uh, uh, was a measure and how it they just validated so compare uh, that to african cultures preference for effective ways of knowing including symbolic imagery and rhythm so they go with the uh, you know a uh, uh, more ways on uh, knowing the things so asian culture tend to emphasize the validity of knowledge gained through striving towards transcendence so there are different ways of uh, uh, you know um, uh, approaching uh, the knowledge that people are uh, putting uh, this is well depicted with a picture in the next slide that different fields have 
uh, different fields have different insects different ponds have different fish so if you can see this photograph uh, the picture on international arrivals so what do i do now because you know they, they, these two people are trying to interact one is trying to give the card so he's just waiting that when is he going to take up my card but the other person is uh, just trying to shake the hand first so and then um, people have their own personal space we see that in this picture the lady is trying to say that he seems to be a bit unfriendly whereas the person is a bit scared that oh my god this is the invasion of my own personal space and the person behind is little scared that uh, i'm the next what should i do now so these all lead to cultural diversities so it is very important to respect the differences when we are working together in the next slide you will see that awareness of cultural differences doesn't have to divide us from each other in fact becoming more aware of our cultural differences as well as exploring our similarities can help us communicate with each other more effectively so recognizing where cultural differences are at work in the first step toward understanding and respecting each other so it's very important to learn about different ways that people communicate uh, it can be very enriching um, uh, for our lives people different communication styles reflect deeper philosophies and they have different world views which are foundation for their culture so understanding these deeper philosophies gives us a broader picture of what the world has to offer us so learning about people's culture has the potential to give us a mirror image to our own culture we have the opportunity to challenge our assumptions about the right way of doing things and consider a variety of approaches so we have a chance to learn new ways to solve problems that we had previously given up on or accepting the difficulties as just the way things are if we are open to learning about people from other cultures we become less lonely right and then we have our own stereotypes we break those stereotypes uh, that separate us from the whole group of people who could be friends and partners in working for the change so many of us launch for real contact talking with people different from ourselves give us hope and energizes us to take on any challenge or improving our communication communities and the world so uh, we will we'll just see that how to in the next slide we'll see how to manage the differences on an individual level so it's it's a great opportunity to learn uh, from generation um, uh, you know we can just generalize about uh, other cultures but don't use the generalization or stereotyping or uh, you know uh, over simplify your ideas about another person so we we need to be more empathetic towards other cultures don't assume that breakdowns in communication occur because other people are on the wrong track search for ways to make the communication work rather than searching for who should receive the blame for the breakdown we need to listen actively and empathetically try to put yourself in the other person's shoe especially when another person's perception or ideas are very different from your own you might need to operate at the edge of your own comfort zone remember that cultural norms may not apply to the behavior of any particular individual we are all shaped by many many factors ethnic background family education that we have already discussed in the previous slide so we need to be more empathetic towards the background that we have uh, built upon so we have got the gear three important gears that don't assume don't stereotype respect the differences listen actively and empathetically so these are the three gears which are uh, very important uh we'll also see that how to manage the differences at the workplace in the next slide so in order to businesses to remain effective and competitive leaders need to encourage encourage and engage their employees rather than inform and instruct so more engagement is uh, always appreciated it is natural to expect others to behave in line with our own cultural norms so we are not open or we are rigid for some norms or uh, our own values so it should be respected managers and leaders should not show such frustration towards behavior dictated by different cultural values so the way to combat this is to open up to cultural differences instead of acting with 
uh, prejudice seek to learn more by asking about the values that dictate certain behaviors so it is very important to ask rather than jumping on to conclusion you know uh, it's very important to ask to understand that what i am understanding is actually what is said so if there is any confusion of what is said and what is understood or perceived it's better to ask and get the clarity developing communication skills such as openness and agreeability will help to build respect for you as a leader and engender effective communication request and expect feedback to help develop your cross cultural communication capabilities by appreciating cultural differences one can avoid cross cultural misunderstandings which can ruin promising relationships so we have a in the next slide you will see that we got a 10 strategies for effective cross cultural communication the most important the first one is ask questions to have better clarity distinguish perspectives that why this person is speaking and what is the perspective uh, from where this person is coming which has led to this perspective build self awareness recognize the complexity avoid stereotyping respect differences listen actively be honest be flexible think twice that's very very important so this is how we can overcome the cultural barriers and this was the last slide of the presentation will be open up open up for the questions or any concerns thank you so much dr hamino it was a fascinating presentation and it is interesting and intriguing how much we are influenced by culture and how much we do not realize how we are positively positively impacted by diversity we are always surrounded by multiple cultures all the time i really loved the iceberg picture you showed us we don't often realize our own biases on our own culture and that's very interesting to to see put that way but the most amazing thing i think was the cultural intelligence wheel i really liked that each of us have our own kind of intelligence which we don't often realize as well so um my question would be just to start this discussion after your presentation how to engage all of these differences i would suppose seeking training and education is a means so that we can learn more about these differences and start engaging better as we're doing here at our coil global workplace <laughs> but you have also showed very um you've shown very empathetic means as self awareness listening to other people which are much simpler than that i mean it's just really about being empathetic so uh, i want to hear from you on that which are the means you think are the best to engage all of these differences in the workplace yeah i think we i'll go with the number one being empathetic because yes we do encounter a lot of tough people but again i'll go with that iceberg example even if the toughest kids or toughest people or hard to handle it's just the background the pyramid the iceberg that you have seen because there's a lot of uh you know uh, happenings their culture their own culture their upbringing the difficulties or the challenges that have uh, uh they have gone through have made them what they have become so it is very important to have a step by step understanding of that person first being empathetic and then just understanding how their childhood was uh from where they belong and then slowly and steadily once you will understand uh, the uh, you know base of that person and then you can bring uh, you you just need to understand because that goes with the counseling mentoring or the psychology basically you know empathy and the psychology once you have understood you will be able to provide them with a better solution appropriate to that person i don't ever go by standardizing the whole class so if you have 20 students in the class so every individual will have a different psychology and they will need a uh, different empathetic um you know um, approach towards them 
so and you will be able to provide solution to all different 20 students in and but then you will be amazed to see that all these 20 students will have different requirements and you cannot provide them a single solution that's incredible professor i think that this was definitely one of the best presentation i've seen so far doing all of our conferences from the past years i think that the students are going to benefit so much from it so much from it so in name in the name of the unis group i would love to thank you for being here and taking the time to talk to us about such an important topic and to all of us watching to all of you watching us <laughs> um that's it for today so Please don't forget to fulfill the attendance list to receive your certificate. It is important. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for our news, to uh, receive our interesting contents, and also to follow us on social media. You can find the links below. I've always wanted to say that. Please subscribe to our channel and find the links below. <laughs> so thank you so much and see you next time. Thank you, Estella.